what's going on man welcome back to the basement or welcome to the basement if you're just scrolling youtube looking for march madness videos while you fill out a bracket i am ron stewart this is a fantasy football channel but every year we step outside our comfort zone a little bit make a march madness video because i love it i watch it every year since middle school i have been that guy that hounds down like 15 to 20 of my buddies gets a pool going just so we all have something to root on and cheer for in what i think is probably the best postseason tournament in all of sports so i'm sure you guys have the same setup where you have a pool with either your hometown buddies your college friends your office and we all want to win we want to either take first prize or have bragging rights and there's a lot more that goes into it than just filling out the perfect bracket so today we're going to go through the strategy of things you should be considering when you fill out your bracket and then i am going to use those principles to fill out a bracket for you guys no predetermined anything, just straight off the dome using what we talk about. So with all that being said, if you enjoy, make sure you go down below, leave a like. If you're a college basketball guy, whatever. But if you have a fantasy football league or something, subscribe, come back in the summer, ride with us during peak offseason draft time, win your fantasy football leagues. Let's go. So let's talk about strategy when it comes to filling out your bracket. And before we even decide our winner, our 512 seed update or upsets, all of that, you got to zoom out and you have to figure out the context of your pool, mainly the scoring. And the size of your pool. So I'm assuming that you guys are like me and you're playing on ESPN. I feel like most people are playing on ESPN, the ESPN tournament challenge. So let's just sort of dust over what the rules are, or actually really just the scoring system, which is this accumulating points for. And you can see it's really important to know the scoring system and how top heavy it is. You get the same points every single round. So final four, you get... 80 points for every team that you predict make it to the final four. 80 points. That's the same amount of points that you get for picking eight games correctly in the first round. If you get two final four teams, that's 16 games correctly in the first round. And as you can see, even just getting the national champion correct, you get 320 points, which is the same as going perfect in the first round. So it really matters about your, you know, final four, deciding your championship, the money is made in those final rounds, and it's why you should probably be building your bracket from the top down, right? You shouldn't be just like stressing over your 5v12s and your 7v10s and trying to get the perfect first round. You should really go to the top and work your way backwards because the points are scored in those later rounds. It's really how long can you have, it's almost like a game of Battleship where you want to have your Sweet 16 projected or, or protected, your Elite 8 protected. Every single After every single round of the tournament, you should be making sure, oh, is my Elite Eight intact? Is my Final Four intact? Because that is where the big points come down the line. Now, the next thing you want to consider as well is the size of your bracket pool. It matters a ton. And for this video, I'm going to assume that you guys are just in a pool with your buddies. Let's say 25 to 50. We'll just say 50 to make things very, very easy here. And this is important because you need to know how many teams you're competing against across the board. So ESPN actually has a really, really cool tab where if you go to who picked whom, you can see uh, what everybody thinks, right? So let's actually zoom in a little bit here. And you can see, uh, you know, 23.2% of brackets have Alabama winning it all, 11.8% have Kansas. And the reason why this is so important is because let's say you pick Alabama to win it all in your bracket. If 23% of teams are going to be on Alabama and you're in a 50-person pool, that's about 12 other people where you guys all have the same championship, you have all have the same champion, and you then have to beat those 12 people to get into first place, right? You can get the national champion right with Alabama, but you could still come in like 11th or 12th because... There's a bunch of other teams out there, and those are your main competition. So you have to keep that in mind, right? So I just did 23.7% of 50 is 12. Same thing with, let's say you go uh, Gonzaga at 4%. 4% of 50 is just two. So you could assume 
there's only two people in your pool that are going to have Gonzaga. So instead of having to compete with 11 or 12 other Alabama brackets where you have to get really unique, right? Probably not go too, too chalky. Maybe sneak, sneak in like a four or five seed into your final four. Make some decisions that set you apart from those other Alabama teams. But if you go with a team like Gonzaga, 4% of brackets have Gonzaga picked to go all the way. You're only going to have to beat one or two other people in your pool, which means you don't have to get that unique. You can kind of just go pretty, pretty chalky and just bet that the chalk will beat the one or two other people in your bracket, maybe the person who also picked Gonzaga outsmarted themselves with like a seven seed in the final four. So you really need to consider the context of your winner where you decide, okay, this is my winner. This is how many teams I'll probably have to beat out to win it all, right? So you can go down the list like 11%. So 11 or like 12% of 50 is going to be like 10 people, 12 or no, five people, six people. And you just have to sort of think through it in that lens. That's why this data of like who picked whom is so important. Now, based on the size of your pool, that just extends out, right? Let's say you're in a thousand person pool. Assume you have to beat 230 Alabama brackets at that point, which means you should be getting insanely, insanely unique, maybe like a nine or 10 seed uh, in your final four. Gonzaga would then go up to 40 people to beat. So you probably have to get even pretty unique there. Really, I think you want to keep the context of the size of your pool in terms of like how weird you're getting with like upsets and sweet 16 upsets and, you know, high seeds making it to the final four. And then you also want to think about your national championship through the lens of your pool. You shouldn't be picking a national championship or national champion that has a lower percentage to win than your percentage to win your pool, right? So if it's one out of 50, that's a 2% chance for you to win. So there isn't really a need. If there's only 50 teams, there's really no need to go get down here to like Michigan State that has 0.5% chance to win, right? Because if they don't have the same chance that you have to win your bracket, then you're selling yourself short at that point. If Michigan State wins, it'll just come down to who have who has the best bracket. Like you might as well, instead of entering Michigan State in your pool, if that's what you think is going to win, you might as well just put a future on them because your bracket pool is too small for you to really realize much profit on a 0.5% bet. So you should really be getting into, you know, I would say Marquette and above for 50 uh, team pools, but or 50 bracket pools but you can even you could probably dip into like UConn Baylor like one percent plus if you wanted to but it's just something to be mindful because you don't want to sell yourself short and it's the same thing that let's say it's just a 10 person bracket pool with like you and nine of your closest buddies you shouldn't be dipping much much lower than like Purdue Texas UCLA you don't have to get all that thin with your championship odds now these are just these aren't even really the raw odds of teams to make it. It's just the public and who's been filling out their brackets so far. So these numbers will change. Um, the last thing we want to talk about with strategy is leverage, where it's really important to see what your teams are doing right. So here we're seeing, you know, 88% of brackets right now have Alabama advancing to the Sweet 16. This would be this would be winning in round 32, moving to Sweet 16. And it's important to see this data. And then compare it to projections, right? So you have what other teams are doing, and then you have projections. And I really like Ken Palm, and I really like 538. You can use one or the other. I actually use both. Ken Palm, you go to uh, Miscellany, and then you go to Blog, and it'll come up here. Let me actually move this up ever so slightly. Miscellany, Blog. I don't even know if I'm if I'm pronouncing Miscellany uh, the correct way. And then you can kind of see, right? Uh, same thing with March Ma uh, uh, 538 March Madness. You just look up March Madness 538. I'll make sure I put like links down below in the description and stuff. Um, and you can see, you know, 22% to win for Houston, 16% for Alabama, all of that. And then you pretty much just want to compare and contrast sort of how these look compared to what brackets are doing. So right now, Alabama, let's say Alabama and Ken Palm has a... How low is Alabama on here? 2023 tourney forecast. Are they just super low, Alabama? Huh. Something is wrong here with this forecast. Well, let's just go off of here, right? So Alabama is 16% to win it all. So if 23% of brackets have them making it all the way, you don't want to choose them because you will have to face off more brackets than you should, right? So 15, 16% chance to win means that that would be what? 16% of 50, which is going to be probably somewhere in like the six, seven, eight range. 
But based on the data we have, we know that you're going to have to probably beat out 12 or 13 other teams because they're a little bit more popular than they actually have the chance to win. So you kind of want to look through that lens of who's a team that has a chance to win it all, has a good chance to win it all, that the public isn't on a ton because then you have a team that has a good chance to, to win it all and you don't have to beat a bunch of other teams in your bracket pool. So what I end up doing is I take the 538 probabilities, I take the uh, Ken Palm probabilities, and I put it all in Excel sheet. That's what I've been doing all morning pretty much and compare it versus the ESPN data. And that brings us to here where we have my projections here, or not projections, but you have uh, you know, ESPN, which is the projected what teams are picking in their bracket. And then I have both, which is just the 538 and Ken Palm percentage to advance in each round. And you can compare and leverage. So the difference is the leverage, right? So first round, Missouri, 63% of people have them advancing, but they only have a 36% chance to actually win that game according to projections. So why would you take the side that the public is on if they have less a chance to actually win that game? Because then if they win this game, and that gives you a leg above 63.6% of the field, and they have a better chance to lose than the market is giving them credit for. So you can kind of just do that across the board. You can do the same thing with the championship, right? So if we sort by leverage here, or actually let's just sort by both, right? So this is just the projected to win from 538 and Ken Palm. And you can see Alabama, 24.7% of teams, that, that number's down now to 23.2%. And you can still see pretty awful bet to make here. You're getting minus 9% of leverage. So if we're just looking at like the favorites here, Houston's a great pick. UCLA is probably a fine pick. You're not going to get many teams that look like Houston. I think Houston's probably like the meta pick this year. Nobody really wants to pick them, but the numbers say that they are as good as anybody. Uh, but like UCLA and Texas are still fine. You ideally want them to be positive. You should be off Purdue. Gonzaga's fine. And I would say Kansas and Alabama are probably the two worst value-wise to take bets on. 11.8% of the field have them to win it all. But in terms of projections, they're only at a 4.41% chance to make it. So their chance to make it isn't even that great. And you're going to have to go up against so many more teams because they're that much of a common team pick. So now we're going to go through an entire bracket and kind of use the strategies we laid out. So this is going to be through the context of a 50 person pool, what I would be doing in terms of just the most optimal setup in a league like that. So let's go here. I think this is what we're looking for. Yeah, this is what we're looking for. This view here should be good. And we can see teams zoom out a bit. But we can see the teams on the left left hand side, uh, their leverage. This is just not a national championship game, final four, elite eight, all of that. So we talked before, let's sort of go from the ground up. I think that this is probably going to close uh, as we get closer, right? 9.21% of leverage on Houston. I think in, in larger pools, right, with Tennessee, Yukon, Crane, I think these are all fine picks. But in a pool of 50 people, again, right, so one divided by 50 is 2% or better. So, I mean, I guess you could go uh, with Tennessee or Yukon if you wanted to, but let's just go with Houston here because they're clearly the most leveraged team that we could go with. So, again, we're just going to go top down, kind of see how things go from here. But we'll have Houston winning it, and then we can kind of work our way back, right? So this is going to be... To make this would be to make the championship game elite eight. This will be to make the final four, and we have some teams that kind of show themselves here. Now we have UConn or we have Houston, so we we have to assume that ten point eight percent of brackets are going to be on Houston. So we have to beat like five other people. We don't have to get all that weird. So I think honestly, instead of sorting for leverage, you should really just be sorting for percentage to win, and then kind of go from there. Um, because you don't want to have too many. Uh, just like the best leverage possible teams because at the end of the day, you're getting a ton of value on UConn, but they're also still just a 15.67% chance to make it to the final four. So you don't want to get too, too thin if you don't have to. I think that our, our first choice is going to be Houston. Uh, I like UCLA here as well. I think UCLA and Gonzaga are probably in the same uh, quadrant, huh? I think I'll probably go, let's go with Gonzaga in this one, I think. We'll go Gonzaga in this area. As much as I actually love UConn and I love Kansas, uh, or not Kansas, I love UConn and I love Gonzaga and I love UCLA. I wonder if the numbers are talking up UCLA a little bit uh, too much just because 
their numbers are probably great, but they had an injury. Uh, I can't remember the kid's name, but he like tore an Achilles or something, or maybe not an Achilles, but he tore something. Uh, it was like their best defender, maybe. They do still have a lot of continuity with um, what Hakez, Campbell, Amari Bailey is exciting. You know what? Let's go UCLA. Let's go UCLA. They're the they're the most sound uh, team to use number wise. We'll go UCLA. We'll bring them to the Final Four. Um, Houston over UCLA in this Final Four. So Alabama has a forty percent chance. This is also something else you can do. So with a team like Alabama, we know across the board they're not a team to be good on. It just comes down to how far do we want them to go. Like at what point is it the most optimal? to have Alabama bounce, and it's probably where the number is the reddest, right? Because that's just going to be, like, the worst leverage in that round. So, I mean, you could make a case to have them lose, and, like, this would be what? So this would be round one, round two. So you can have them lose in round three. I guess that, so you can have them lose in the Sweet 16. You could have, the, have them lose in the Elite Eight. It seems like losing in the Final Four is probably where you're going to get the most uh negative leverage yeah so let's have them probably lose in the elite eight or no no no. we'll have them lose in the final four alabama yeah let's do that we'll have alabama lose in the final four so we'll, we'll take Al alabama to our final four why not um and then from here we can do let's let's do this again so we have houston bama when's the most optimal time for purdue to get bounced So if you want Purdue to get bounced, like you're not getting much of an edge, right? So final four, just minus 2.83. The edge you're getting the most is going to be in these two rounds. Oh, wait, my bad. Now you can see what round each of them are. Um, so you can see uh, Bama, Purdue. We just talked about it, but with Purdue, we probably want them getting bounced in the Elite Eight. So let's, let's have them bounce in the Elite Eight, Purdue. Uh, I don't even know which bracket they're in or which I imagine. Yeah, this one. So this one would be bounced in the elite eight. So I think that's elite eight. Um, they would probably have to lose to one of these teams. So I'm trying to think of where, where to go from here. So these are teams to win or to make the final four. So we have Tennessee as our fourth. We have right now it's pretty chalky. It's Bama, it's Houston, it's UCLA. We don't have to get all that crazy. Uh, so Bama, we don't want Purdue in there because I think I think your best bet with Bama is to have them lose in the Final Four. I think your best bet with Purdue is to have them lose in the Elite Eight. Texas is an interesting team. Um, where's Texas at? I imagine Texas is in the. So Texas is in the Midwest. So that would be going up against Houston. Okay, so that makes sense. So we we want them losing regardless there. Um, and it would make sense to actually have Texas get bounced in the Sweet 16. So let's do that. Let's have Texas get bounced in the Sweet 16. I don't know who they'll be going up against. Um, our final Final Four team, though, if we're looking here, we have Houston, we have Bama, we're on UCLA, so we're pretty, we're pretty damn uh, public at this point. So to make that final one, I do like Tennessee in this uh, out of this side. I don't like Kentucky. I do think Marquette is pretty fun, but Marquette's already accounted for. Like, this is what it really boils down to, where you see Tennessee and Marquette are in the same exact side, right? So you have Tennessee. Um, let's actually make it so um, this doesn't get overlapped. And zoom this out a bit. My bad, fellas. I think this should be good, though. All right, now let's actually go Tennessee. I don't really even love Tennessee, but like this is what it boils down to is what I was saying. Tennessee and Marquette both rough, roughly 16% to make the final four. Tennessee is on 7.2% of brackets. Marquette's much more popular, 18.7%. So it's really in your best interest to just go Tennessee there. Uh, now, I do love Marquette to make a little bit of a run, um, but because the public is so much on them, we might as well just fade them. I'm also trying to see here... Like, Kansas State's much lower down there. UConn, Creighton. What else is in this area? Kentucky is, like, uh, Kentucky is honestly a decent Final Four team. We don't have to get too weird here. Let's just go, let's just go Tennessee. 
we'll go Tennessee to win it all. Again, we don't want to get too weird, but this is like just weird enough um, that you can still win with Houston as your winner. Because if we're just looking at the odds here, the chalk would be Houston, Bama, Purdue, uh, UCLA, just in terms of what the projections think. Uh, we're still going with Houston. We're still going UCLA. Uh, we're fading Kansas. And we're just going Tennessee here. I think Tennessee is probably one of the better bets uh, to make the Final Four. Yeah, just in terms of leverage-wise. UConn is fun too. Uh, but we did decide to have... Uh, we did decide to have UCLA out of this region. It's such a bummer, man. I love UConn this year. I think they're a very, very solid team. The issue is that they are in a division or section here with Kansas, with Arkansas, with TCU, Gonzaga, UCLA. Like, I love UCLA, Gonzaga, and Kansas as well. So, just an absolute brutal side. If they were the four seed on this side instead of Tennessee, I would feel a million times better about UConn uh here for Tennessee but I think that this is this is fine we don't need to have we don't need to have one two seed and two one seeds. I think that this is just weird enough uh that we should be all good to go now in terms of man that actually puts us in a weird spot now because our team to make the championship should probably be should probably be Bama but I don't want it to be Tennessee because Tennessee only a 7.95 percent chance to get there so let's do Houston. Let's do Houston over Bama. I think that that is just, I think that is just weird enough. It's not the most optimal spot for Bama to get bounced. Or actually, yeah, the most optimal spot to get bounced is the Final Four. But then you would need to have somebody from that Tennessee side that you think is capable of beating them, which I don't really think that there is somebody like from this East side. It would probably have to be Purdue. And Purdue, again, we saw it's like putting together a puzzle. Of this we already know it's not super optimal to bring Purdue uh, to the championship, to the Final Four, anything like that. I'm trying to see. Yeah, Tennessee really has the best odds of any of the guys in this lower one. Like, I mean, like, if you want to get weird, you can go Duke. Kansas State feels like a pretty weak three seed. You could go Marquette, but, like, Marquette has the same exact chance of, of making it to uh, the Final Four or winning in the Final Four as Tennessee. So let's just go Tennessee. We'll go Bama losing to Houston in the final. Now, from here, you can kind of get – uh, you can kind of just go from there. I think the best thing you can do is probably sort by national championship odds here. Or actually, let's sort by ESPN having whoever. And try and decide sort of where it makes the most sense to have them get bounced. Like Kansas, I mean, you're getting... I mean, they have just a 35.3% chance of winning in the Sweet 16. ESPN has been at 68.3%, so you could have them losing the Sweet 16 if you wanted to. I actually love that. Let's have them, let's have them lose to UConn. In the Sweet 16, I think. I kind of do like that. If we have Kansas here, this is the Sweet 16, I believe. Yep, Sweet 16. Kansas, UConn. What's the lever? Yeah, UConn has great leverage here too. Yeah, so UConn, 30% chance to make it uh, past the Sweet 16. I am completely fine with that, I think. Yeah, so we'll have UConn over Kansas. Again, like UConn, this is the crazy part. UConn has a 31% chance to, to advance to the Elite Eight. Kansas just a 35%. So literally only 4% chance more with Kansas in a 1v4 uh, seed. So why not go with UConn there? So we'll have UConn coming out, just building out our Sweet 16 here. Um, so I guess if we built out our Sweet 16, it would just be like winning the round of 32. Um, or actually, no, no, no. I'm bouncing all over the place here. Let's keep doing this. Let's keep sort of, let's just go through the public favorites. We already decided what we're doing with Houston. We haven't decided what we're doing with Texas yet. Um, it probably makes the most sense for them. Let's see. So they're in this side. They're going to be playing against Houston in the Sweet 16. There's probably not a need. There's probably not a need to do much more. Like we could have them lose to Xavier if we really, really wanted to. Let's see this real quick. Where where does Xavier get put? Yeah, Xavier's actually a bad team to make it to the Sweet 16 uh, as well. So let's make let's do Texas versus Houston here again pretty chalk but I think it does make sense now let's look through the rest of the public champs or not public champs but just people teams that the public are high on uh we decided what we're doing with Texas we decided what we're doing with Purdue I believe um Texas UCLA Zona Arizona is an interesting one 
seems like your best bet is to have them like we're seeing here their biggest leverage is sweet 16 uh and round of 32 so that's probably why that's probably where you want them to get bounced so let's see arizona we'll have them get bounced probably in the sweet 16 which would be against like baylor or something like that i don't know that they lose to either of these teams um, but I'm completely fine with that. I'm actually curious to see where they have Baylor in terms of uh, Sweet 16 or just making it to the Sweet 16 because I do like me some Baylor. Uh, wow, so Baylor's pretty tough here. Let's actually just look at what, like essentially who has, th this is too advanced of the Sweet 16. Who are the smartest Sweet 16 plays? We've done UConn. Uh, we could do Gonzaga. We don't have to do Gonzaga. Theirs isn't terrible. Like, these aren't terrible. Like, to be honest, like, minus 7% on, like, you know, 73% versus 81%, like, isn't a huge difference at all. The UCLA one's not bad. Zona, I'm good on. Tennessee's a team that you probably want in your Sweet 16. It seems like if we're looking at it this way, we probably want San Diego State in our Sweet 16. But I'm, I might be, I might just, I, I might be squeezing out too much, um... I might be squeezing out too much, uh, what am I trying to say, you know, optimization here. But San Diego State does have a better chance to make it than Virginia does uh, in terms of making it to the Sweet 16. So we'll do San Diego State, even though I don't really like the... I think there's some kind of stat out there where it's... Uh, I think Mountain West teams do absolutely awful in the tournament. All right, so let's, let's, let me try and think here. We've gone back down, or top to bottom... We have our almost our entire Elite Eight set. Let's decide the rest of our Elite Eight first, actually. So we need an Elite Eight from here. So this is to win the Sweet 16. We need this side of the bracket. So this has to be like Creighton or um, I think Creighton's pretty high up there. We could go Creighton. We could go Arizona, but Arizona is a pretty rough play, as we can see here. Uh, Texas, UCLA, Purdue. So let's go Creighton because we could go Baylor as well. But like you can see here, like Creighton and Baylor have the same exact percentage of making it out of the Sweet 16. Creighton is much less uh, is much less popular than a Baylor. So I think we could go Creighton uh, to go up against Arizona here. We'll probably do Baylor over uh, Santa Barbara. Uh, I think that's Santa Barbara. Huh. So we have Creighton now. I believe that this would be Creighton making it to the Sweet 16. Um, even though it's not really what I had that sorted for. So Creighton making... So this is to make it to the Sweet 16. Um, or actually, no, to make it to the Elite Eight is what we were looking at. So Arizona... I actually want to see real quick. Arizona versus Creighton. So yeah, Arizona is like 34%. Creighton 23%. I don't think that that's a big enough discrepancy for me to really feel that bad about it. We still have... If we're looking at the favorites to be in the Elite Eight here... We have Bama in our lead eight. Uh, we have Houston in our lead eight. We have Texas in our lead eight. Or no, we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. We have we have Houston in our lead eight. We have Texas in our lead eight. We have Bama in our lead eight. We have UCLA in our lead eight. We don't have Purdue. We don't have Kansas. In our lead eight, we have UConn. We have UCLA. We have Tennessee. I'm trying to think. I just don't want to. I I want to make sure I'm going chalky enough. Um, Creighton is interesting. I do like I do like Arizona though, uh, but I don't think it's a big enough discrepancy for me to care. Uh, I'm also looking like in terms of like Marquette. So like Marquette versus we're looking at like Marquette versus Kentucky. <sighs> Kentucky's probably the play there, but I think I'll probably end up going. Uh, I do like Marquette, so I'll, I'll probably go Marquette. Like, what's what's the ideal... Man, they're saying the ideal spot for Marquette to lose is actually... Would actually be in the Sweet 16. So I, I think we definitely want Marquette in the Sweet 16. But who would they lose to? They're not... I, I don't really have them losing to... Uh, I, I don't think that they lose to Kansas State. I don't think that they lose to... Right? Like, Kansas State, in terms of, like, making it to... In terms of making it to the Elite Eight, Kansas State isn't very high. Marquette is one of the 30% plus teams. I do think, like, if you want to go Kentucky there, I think you can. 
Um, and with Houston, maybe we should want to get a little bit less chalky. But again, we only have to really compete against like 10 other brackets here. So I'm going to go Marquette. I'll go with Marquette versus Tennessee uh, in the Elite Eight. So our Elite Eight will be Alabama. It'll be Creighton. I just want to make sure I'm not going all two seeds here either because I do like Arizona. But Arizona is probably a little bit worse than Marquette in terms of making a pick there. I think Creighton's probably the play. So we'll go UConn, Tennessee, Creighton. Those are kind of our like high leverage plays. We're eating the bullet on Marquette. And then I think that's what, four here. And then we have UCLA. UCLA, Texas, Houston, Alabama. So we have literally the top four here. So we have literally the top four. Uh, all the 40% plus teams making it to our lead eight, which I think is sound. Uh, and then we have three really super high leverage teams and then Marquette, just because I, I like Marquette. Um, that's also like another like sort of lesson here is you don't have to just pick the most leveraged play every time. So now that we have like our lead eight set up, we could go sweet 16 by sweet 16, but I actually now want to see the most leveraged round one play. So everybody talks about like five versus 12 and seven versus 10 and whatever, or six and 11. And it's less about getting those exactly right. And it's more about just seeing like who the market is on here. So Utah state, where is Utah state? So Utah state versus Missouri. seems like everybody's on Missouri. Like Missouri will probably be like the worst pick here as well. I don't have a lean either way. If we're just looking at it in terms of like a coin flip, if 70% of the field is on heads, you should just be on tails automatically just so that you're leveraging 70% of the field and you're making the same bet on both sides, but you have a higher reward by sort of getting a leg up on the rest of the field there. So we'll go Utah State, even though I literally don't have a lean on that game at all. We'll probably go Boise State as well, like especially these games here, above 50% projected to win. You're not even really picking... Uh, an underdog to win that game. You're just making a sound bet. So we'll also go Boise State. I will say uh, just make sure you, you know, keep yourself updated because these numbers will change. The ESPN, like, public stuff will change. I'm going to make this Google uh, Sheet downloadable in the, like, probably in the pinned comment below. But definitely remember that I will probably update it, like, Wednesday night. Uh, after a few more days of data comes out because these numbers will fluctuate a little bit now this is where it gets a little bit tougher and i just want to sort by percentage to win uh so we already did utah state we did boise state uh, i guess auburn is like a decent leverage play there i think florida atlantic is actually a great leverage play here uh, and they're actually really good they won their conference tournament i believe i'm also very curious to see uh what the public has in terms of oral roberts here in a second uh, but regardless, let me get Florida Atlantic in there. What does the public have in terms of uh, Duke versus Oral Roberts? So they're actually, like, the public isn't even that high on, or, or, like, there's not even that much value in Oral Roberts. Like, I'm trying to see where the value is. Like, the only real value with Oral Roberts is just getting them out of the first round, which I don't hate. Um, and it's, like, you can see here, like, it's it's low stakes as well. Like, we already have Duke losing. So we could probably take Oral Roberts if we would like to. Um, but I do I do want to see where we're leveraged here. Drake is probably a team we want to take here as well, uh, wherever Drake may be. So Drake over Miami, wow. So like a lot of the, tw a lot of the 5v12s are actually like optimal this year. Uh, let's honestly just go down the list. We'll make sure, like of course we have Kansas winning. Of course we have Purdue making it. Bama, Houston, UCLA, Zona, Texas, Gonzaga, Marquette. Probably have Xavier out, or Xavier out of there as well, wherever they may be. I believe they're also a three seed, yeah. So Xavier will make it out. Tennessee, we already have making it. Baylor as well, there's no there's no real need. Uh, UConn, we already did. Kansas State as well, there's no need to have Kansas State losing early. Um, especially to, I think that's Montana state. I believe, I know we have Creighton advancing. So then that's where Duke comes in. Virginia is an interesting one too. Like this is where you get to the spot where you can start, uh, you know, fading where, you know, 82% of teams have Indiana. You can be on the other side, but it's still a 68% chance for them to win. So it gets a little bit rougher there. Uh, I do want to see like Boise state, I guess like Auburn is a decent play. I think Drake is the move, though. I feel like I don't know if we're doing too many 12 over 5s when we're sort of adhering to this. Uh, we also did look at San Diego State. It's pretty funny, too. You can kind of see, like, 
the uh, suboptimal like early round upsets as well. So you can see like everyone has Missouri. Uh, or no, that's actually not even an upset. But everyone has Northwestern, I believe, as a 10 seed. I could be wrong. Or no, everyone has Northwestern as a 7 seed, even though that they aren't even favored in that game uh, in terms of projections. Iowa's another one of those as well. So let's see, where did we get down to? Duke is interesting. Virginia is interesting. Who the hell is Virginia playing? Furman. I'm not doing Furman. Like, Furman's interesting, but I'm all good there. Man, I would like to, I would like to do Oral Roberts over Duke. Uh, who's Indiana playing? Kent State. Jeez, dude, Kent State's brutal. I, I'll do I'll do Indiana here. Uh, where does it make the most sense for Indiana to lose? Wow, so it actually makes the most sense for Indiana to lose early. Uh, I am curious to know. Indiana should lose early if you actually have them losing early. Uh, where's the optimal spot for Virginia to go? Or actually, I'm looking, where's the optimal spot for Duke to go? Duke is suboptimal across the board, but... It doesn't really matter where you have them getting dropped off. It seems like round two is a little bit more optimal here. Um, man, Duke is very tough to figure out. Virginia, I think it makes a lot of sense to just have them not making it to the Sweet 16. So we already had that with San Diego State over them. Uh, let's look, Let's honestly just go matchup by matchup, to be real. Uh, Maryland versus West Virginia. What does this one come out to? So this one's about a coin flip anyway. So Maryland, you know, 49% chance to win ESPN is on 53.9%. Uh, so there's honestly probably more value of going West Virginia here. But I actually just like Maryland more. I think that they're coached well. I like Kevin Willard. I think they have good guards as well. So I'm going to go Maryland there. Again, you don't really have to adhere to it perfectly. So we have this side of the bracket all filled out. Let's go Midwest. This is probably what I should have done a lot earlier. This, is gonna, this, is, this video is going to drag on a little bit. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, let's look at Iowa versus Auburn. It seems like there's some value in Auburn here. It seems like there's value in Auburn. I think Iowa, like, I, I don't like Iowa at all. I don't trust Iowa at all. Um, what's the most optimal place for Iowa to get bounced? It seems like first round is the most optimal place for Iowa to get bounced. Um, and what's the most optimal place for Auburn to go? So let's go Auburn over Iowa. It seems like the public loves Iowa. Uh, we have Drake here. This is where it gets weird with Drake. Should we have them winning that next matchup? It's them versus Indiana. I'm very curious to see Drake versus, like, in terms of making it to the Sweet 16, who has a higher chance, Indiana or Drake? It's Indiana by a lot, isn't it, huh? So I'm trying to figure out, man, Indiana has to lose. Drake, Kent State's even up here. So, yeah, we'll we'll have Indiana making it that far, even though I don't love it at all. I don't love it at all. Um, I am curious to know, where's the value on Miami? Miami getting bounced first round, good value. Yeah, Miami getting bounced first round is the play. All right, so there's Indiana. I don't have a lean at all on like the, uh, this Iowa State game. What the hell is Iowa State? So Iowa State is like a coin flip to make it. They're going to be playing against Mississippi State or Pitt. Um, I don't think we have a 11 over 6 yet. Iowa State losing first round is where you're getting the most leverage. So let's do yeah, let's let's pick Mississippi State. Nobody wants to nobody wants to pick the like eleven team play in. Um so I have no problem doing that. And then Texas AM versus Penn State is literally on the nose. Um I do just like Penn State more. Uh but where is like the optimal place for Texas AM to go? They're gonna be losing to Texas regardless in the next round. Um so I almost think I, I almost think you're better off. Like, this might sound like flawed logic. What are the rest of my 10 seeds looking like? Let's do Texas A&M. Why not? Let's do Texas A&M. Texas A&M versus Texas. That's a fun matchup. Uh, and then I think we'll do Xavier making it to the Sweet 16. I think we probably have to do that. Let's see. So the most optimal spot for Xavier to get bounced is before the Sweet 16, actually. Dang. Dang. So having Mississippi State or Pitt make a run, dude? What is Mississippi Pitt... Man, 11.3% chance to make it to the Sweet 16 is not terrible there. Um, they are kind of, they're kind of nice plays to make it, but I think I'll chill on that and I'll just go with Xavier. Um, just because Xavier, I mean, they already have, they have like about a coin flip chance to make it that far. So we'll do that. Uh, again, like looks pretty chalky, like literally one, two, three, four, one, two, five, six. Um, this one's also going to be one, two, something. Let's see how this ends up here. 
Um, we have our Midwest, our South at this point. Let's do East real quick. Uh, so we need Duke. We need to make a decision on Duke versus Oral Roberts. Uh, what the heck does the rest of our five versus twelves look like? We have San Diego State. We have Drake winning that five v twelve. Let's look at Duke. It seems like it's most optimal to have Duke get bounced pretty early here. But Oral Roberts, I mean, what? They're at like a 25% chance to win that game? Man, I might just take Duke. I might just take Duke. I, I, I would love to do Oral Roberts, but I think that... I would love to do Oral Roberts, but I think just having them lose in the round of 32 is probably the move on Duke. So we'll do Duke, losing to Tennessee. Uh, we'll also go Kentucky versus Providence. What does that even look like? So Kentucky... Probably most optimal for Kentucky to get bounced early, huh? Because uh, Kentucky the rest of the way is actually kind of a good bet to make a run. I might have Kentucky in my Sweet 16. I might do that. Let's see. Who's a better bet between Kansas State and Kentucky in the Sweet 16? Because I think that's sort of what we're deciding between. Uh, so we'll go Kentucky, Kansas State. Wow, well, right next to each other. And Kentucky is much less stone. So we'll just go Kentucky there. That's actually surprising that Kentucky isn't uh, more favored. So yeah, we'll go, what's this? One, two, four, six. That's a little bit better. I like that. I even think Kentucky, I honestly think Kentucky can get out of this region, but uh, all right. So we have that side of the bracket done and then we'll do West real quick. And then I think that we'll actually have something that looks pretty damn good. Uh, Arkansas, Illinois here. Musselman's a great coach. Like I think, and honestly, Illinois is a pretty damn good team too. Uh, so Arkansas, we're going to have losing to Kansas most likely, but I wouldn't mind having them beat Kansas. I think that they'll have a pretty damn tough time. Uh, I think Kansas will have a pretty tough time uh, beating Arkansas, but I don't, that's a, that's one where if you go like Alabama, I do like Arkansas over Kansas, but we'll go Arkansas there. I, I, I am curious to kind of see where Illinois gets value. They're honestly a good team to, like, that's honestly, I think these are both pretty damn strong eight and nine teams. Uh, but we'll go Arkansas there. I like, I just like Musselman. Uh, let's look at St. Mary's versus VCU here as well. Uh, this could be a popular 5v12, but I think St. Mary's is just really damn solid, though. Yeah, St. Mary's is actually pretty decent leverage er later on in the tournament. I'm looking for VCU. I think the move of VCU is just probably have them get bounced early. Yeah. So we'll have St. Mary's winning that, losing to UConn. Uh, TCU versus Arizona State's interesting. I actually think this one's going to be leveraged where, yeah, TCU is a terrible, you know, only 64% chance to win. It's priced in like it's 84% chance to win that game. And I think ASU versus Nevada really isn't that much of a dog in this one. Yeah, 36% chance to win. This would probably be our biggest, probably our biggest like first round upset or no. Yeah, well, Again, I kind of just want to make sure. Oh, no. I, for, I actually forgot about Michigan State versus USC down there. Hold on. Let's check that out real quick. Michigan State versus USC. I probably prefer Michigan State. Uh, Yeah, and there's not a ton of value elsewhere either. So let's actually check out USC. Yeah, so I mean, either of them are fine picks. But we'll go Michigan State. I just like Tom Izzo. Uh, so this is where it gets tough because I think we have, like, in terms of, like, upsets in the first round, we already have an 11 over 6. We have multiple 12 over 5s. We could go in 11 over 6. Arizona State and Nevada both do sound solid. TCU has played good ball this year, though. Um, outside, I saw them absolutely, I think I saw them implode against Kansas. I think you probably have to, like, you probably have to take the other side, the opposite side of Missouri, the opposite side of Northwestern. We're taking the opposite side of all these games. Let's take the opposite side of TCU as well. Why not? Let's take the opposite side here. Uh, easily Gonzaga. I don't really care what these have to say about Gonzaga. I am curious to know where you're in your best interest to have them lose. And that would be actually to have them not even make the sweet 16, huh? would be, but we're not going to do that. All right. So then we'll have Gonzaga here. I think that's it. Right. I think we've completed everything. 63 or 63 picks made. And we'll do a final score here, huh? Final score. What is sort of the, do we have the... So this is dumb. Uh, let's see here. So Houston, what's like Houston's normal game? 75, 65, you know, just like sub 70s. And then what about Bama? I know Bama scores a lot. 82, 63. You know what? Let's do like 74, 72. 
Enter it for everything. Enter this. I don't really care. We'll submit the picks. Boom. Oh, what the hell, dude? We're not doing that. Come on. All right. <laughs> All right. So there is our winner. After a ton of me just like rambling around, we have Houston there. Uh, you guys can feel free to copy this bracket, use it in your pool. Uh, I think anything that's like 50 people or less, unless if this, uh, the uh, ESPN Who Picked Whom comes out and it completely swaps, people start rushing over to Houston and like a million people watch this video, then that's where you kind of uh, pivot from there. But this is probably the direction I would go. I will probably end up swipping or like swapping this up now that like all you guys are watching it. Some of you guys will be in my uh, bracket pool, but that's going to do it for us today. Uh, all I really have to promote at the end here, uh, I'll make sure I put that Google sheet with the uh, projections in the comments. I'll probably update them one more time before games on Thursday. Uh, like once we have who actually makes it out of the first four games and then, you know, the public is going to change on the whom picked whom stuff. Uh, what else do I have to promote? Again, fantasy football channel, but if you play fantasy football, subscribe, check back in in the summer. Uh, and then I'll also say, if you're looking for a bracket pool to join, I run a $10 bracket pool uh, with the subscribers of my hometown friends. It's $10 to join. Second place gets their $10 back. First place takes the rest. Single entry max. It'll probably be like anywhere from like, I would say 20, 30, 40, 50. Depends on how many views this video gets now that I'm mentioning it here. But it'll probably be somewhere in that area nothing too crazy. It's all subscribers. It's all people uh, that I grew up with and I'm friends with. So if you want to be in that, just DM me on Twitter or Discord or anywhere you can reach me and I'll hit you up. I'll give you my Venmo and then I'll give you a link to the bracket pool. So with all that being said, I appreciate you guys. If you guys watch this, we'll get back to our regularly scheduled programming in terms of fantasy football. I think maybe later today even, but I wanted to rush out to get this video. I absolutely love March Madness. I'm excited as hell for the tournament. I hope you guys are too. And as always, I will see y'all in the next one. I got the juice. I got the juice. Channel, chat, I'm on. Foolies, glad I'm on. Even my haters kind of glad I'm on. Rest in peace to my bag of on. Rapper, song, singer, suspended subpoena from Mr. Meaner.